Hi everybody and welcome back to Boxes Upon Boxes Reviews, Game Night Edition. Tonight we're looking at four board games including Magnetic Chess, Marvel Board Game, otherwise known as Aggravation, LCR, Left Center Right, and Marble Solitaire. In order to play LCR you need at least three players, although this comes with four sets of chips and dice. All of the dice are the same regardless of what color chips each player has. In this edition, every die says right, left, star for center, or dot, which means pass. Every player starts with three chips. I don't know why they give you so many extra, but they do. LCR is played in a series of rounds, each round consisting of rolling the dice and passing the chips as directed by the dice. Let's play a sample round. You simply roll the dice and do what they tell you to do. I have a right, a left, and a dot. Now the dot means a chip stays in front of me. The left and the right means that I move one chip to my left, one chip to the player on my right, and the next round I only roll one die because I only have one chip in front of me. Now it could be that during the round other players passed a chip to me, in which case I would get to roll the number of die that I had equal to the number of chips in front of me. Let's play a sample round. Again, you roll the dice and do what they tell you to do. In this case, I rolled a center, a dot, and a left. This means I would pass one chip to the player on my left, one chip goes to the center, and one chip stays in front of me. Now, since I only have one chip in front of me, I will roll one die my next turn. In this case, I rolled a star. This chip goes to the center. Now, if nobody else has been passing chips to me, I'm not out of the game, but I don't roll on the next round. Gameplay continues until only one player has chips in front of them. That player gets all the chips in the center of the table. Now, this has more significance if you're playing for money, and I'll note that these tubes could easily fit a nickel or a dime but they give you chips, so you win the chips. Like I said earlier, this set comes with supplies for four players. However, you can combine multiple sets to support as many players as your table size allows. This game is great to bring to a family reunion or travel where space is limited, or maybe just the coffee shop or pub. You can't really mess up LCR. The company either gives you everything you need or they don't, and this edition has everything you need for four players. Now, whether you enjoy this game is another matter altogether. It has more to do with the company that you play it with than the actual game itself. So I will give it a five out of five stars simply because they deliver the entire experience and what you do with that experience is up to you. This is Magnetic Chess. Why they call it Magnetic Chess, I have no idea. As far as I can tell, there are no similarities at all, other than you play it on a board with pieces. Inside the box, you get a playing board, 20 magnetic pieces, and this spinner. What you don't get are instructions. This spinner is tiny. It doesn't work very well, and I have trouble reading what it says on the dial anyway. However, I think it is not necessary to play the game and pointless to include. I have the board set up for a two-player game. You can easily make this a four-player game by distributing the number of pieces evenly amongst all four players. Playing the game is easy. Each player takes a turn putting a piece on the board. Now these pieces are very magnetic and the goal is to put a piece on the board and not attract any other pieces. If you attract another piece to the piece you put on the board, you take all those pieces and put them back into your slot. Let's play a sample game. I'm just going to grab some pieces and you can see how magnetic they are. And I'll simply place them on the board. I'm going to place them as far apart from each other as possible, which gets progressively more difficult the more pieces you put on the board.
as you progress, you'll kind of notice when pieces start to move. This game favors people with steady hands. As you place pieces down, you can notice them start to wobble. And you just avoid that situation. I've found that the person who fails first generally loses the game. So that's, that's how you can fail. I've had games last to the final two pieces, and obviously the strategy is to start first. The fewer pieces on the board, the better. I've seen many versions of this game, including versions that don't have a board at all. They simply have a ring and you have flat stones that you put down so they don't roll around the ring. I do like this version of the game. The board is high quality, the pieces are strongly magnetic, and if you just, Ignore this spinner altogether, just throw it in the garbage. This is a fine implementation. I would warn against having this around small children and pets. These could really mess up your innards if swallowed. You could travel with this game. However, I would be concerned about any game that had round pieces that could roll away and be lost. As far as fun goes, I would place this somewhere between tic-tac-toe and checkers. From a quality perspective, I would give this edition a 5 out of 5 stars. For entertainment value, 3 out of 5 stars. So let's split the difference and call this a 4 out of 5 star game. This is the marble board game, more popularly known as Aggravation. They supply you with this sheet of instructions and that is how I'm going to judge this game. This game supports six players. Every player chooses a color, gets a corresponding die, and marbles that match that color. They call these marbles, but they are very heavy, so I think they are coated ball bearings. One thing that makes this version of the game interesting is its modular design. For example, let's say you wanted to set the board up for five players you can simply remove the yellow part altogether and now you have a five player board. Given that the nature of the game is to move your marbles around the perimeter of the board, when you make the board smaller, the path is shorter and the game is quicker. It has been years since I've played this game and I had to re-familiarize myself with the instructions. You have four marbles in your base in order to move your marble to the starting position, you have to roll a 1 or a 6. If you roll any other number, you don't move. Let's say that I have already rolled a 1 or a 6, and my piece has moved from my home base to the starting position. On my next turn, I must move this piece because I cannot move a piece from my base to a starting position that is already occupied. The normal movement of the marbles is to go around the perimeter of the board. You cannot go into another player's home position, but you can occupy their starting position. However, that is dangerous if they still have pieces in their base because they could knock you out. The center of the board has its own rules and advantages, but in order to use those advantages, you must land exactly on that position. These are called shortcut positions, and this is the center hole. If you are starting from a shortcut position, you can move along the other shortcut positions until you get back to your own board. The center hole allows you to travel to any shortcut position as long as you roll a 1. Any other roll is ignored. The center hole allows you to travel to any shortcut position but you must roll a one in order to get out of the center hole. Any other roll and you lose your turn. For example, say I am in the starting position and I roll a five. One, two, three, four, five. Now I am in the shortcut. My next roll, say I roll a six, I can go along the shortcut trail. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I am back in my home board. For another example, say I am back in the starting position and I roll a six. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I am in the center position. I must roll a one to get out of that position. If I roll a six, five, four, three, two, I don't move. I roll a one, I can go directly to this shortcut and then that would put me in a good position to go into my home space later. Once you move into the home position, that marble is safe, but you must roll exactly to get into the home position. For example, if I am in the position right before home, I must roll a four or less, or I'll have to go around the board one more time. Another rule that makes this game fun is the ability to knock another player back to the base position. For example, if red is in yellow's start position and yellow rolls a one or a six, the yellow ball would go into the start position and red goes back to base. However, you must roll the exact number in order to knock a player back to base. For example, if red is in this position and yellow rolls a four, one, two, three, four, yellow jumps over red and does not knock red back to the base position. That's all there is to the rules of the game. This implementation of the game is a quality addition. It is easy to set up and tear down the configuration of the board. The marbles are quality. The dice are a little on the small side, but they work. The board itself is smooth. It's printed well. The holes are evenly drilled. I really don't have that many complaints about it. Um, I guess I would like, <laughs> if I, if I, if in a perfect world, I would not have white writing on light white wood. Um, I would have a, uh, just, I would use black instead and, and that would make it easier to read. However, it doesn't really impact anything. It still plays well. I would give this a four out of five stars. Oh, one more thing. It does come with this handy storage bag. All of the pieces, all of the marbles and dice fit in this bag. And then you just throw it in your closet or whatever. And it, it's, it's very handy. So yeah, four out of five stars. This is Marble Solitaire. And I think it is literally Marble Solitaire. The board is marble. I think the pieces are marble as well. Perhaps dyed marble, but marble nonetheless. It comes with everything you see here. There are six extra marbles. Um, the one thing it doesn't come with is a storage bag. I use this Crown Royal bag for my marbles. Um, but this is really made to be left out, I, I believe. It, uh, something that you would keep on the coffee table and just play whenever the mood strikes. The rules of this game are easy. You arrange the marbles. The color doesn't matter. They could be all the same color. It just doesn't matter. You put all the marbles on the board and leave the center position empty. It doesn't have to be the center, but that's what they suggest in the rules. And then you simply take one marble and move it to the empty space. And whatever marble you jump over gets placed in the track. So for example, I'm going to take this marble, jump over this green one, put the green one in the track. And now I have two open holes. I have more options that I can move. So then I'll take this blue one and jump over this red one. And now I have three open holes. And the idea is to remove all of the marbles except for one, and then you win. It's solitaire. And I have played other versions of this game with like uh, golf tees and whatever, but this, this is the classic example of a, an overproduced game, a delightfully overproduced game. I love overproduced games. This, what, what more could you do? Are you going to make the balls out of solid gold or whatever? This, this is over the top cool. And uh, this is the kind of thing that you would be happy to have out on your coffee table. Just leave it out all the time because it is a conversation piece. This is a showstopper. It's, I mean, it's not a complex game and it's like, oh, that's nice. And that's, maybe that might be the end of it, <laughs> but 
Nonetheless, this is a very simple game that really didn't deserve this much production value, but I love it. I love when they just remove the constraints and make something beautiful. This is something you would proudly display. It's not a very complex game. It, it, it's entertaining and you could try different starting positions and you would, you would provide a, a reasonable challenge. Um, however, it's, it's just beautifully produced. For a fun factor, uh, I don't know, say three out of five. For a production value, definitely a five out of five. So let's split the difference and give this a four out of five rating. Thanks for stopping by. Hi everybody, I am coming up on my 100th Boxes Upon Boxes review. Can you believe it? And I wanted to celebrate by having a subscriber appreciation event where you can win one of the products I reviewed on this channel. I'm still working out the details, but I just wanted to give you a heads up so you can hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you won't miss out on the big event. Thanks for stopping by.